3.67 ounces. That adds up to about $50 a yard. That's double what we expected. The Discovery series Gold Rush has long been entertaining viewers through its action-packed stories of gold mining. The swing from the highs of succeeding and the lows of equipment failures and extreme weather conditions has kept the audience on the edge of the couch since its inception. Meanwhile, though the cast of the show is famous for its mining talent and daredevilry, many people don't realize just how rich the cast members have become. Despite the challenges of the mining industry, the miners, who are worth the envy of the most successful entrepreneurs, have amassed fortunes beyond imagination. So, let's reveal the net worth of some cast members of Gold Rush and see how they've been able to accumulate such heavy fortunes. You gotta remember in the olden days down here, we did 1,200 ounces every 10 days. Tony Beats has been a famous personality from the world of mining and also a well-liked character on Gold Rush. He was born on September the 15th, 1959 in Wittenesch, the Netherlands. He spent his early years in Bergwert, Friesland, where he was the owner of a farm. Tony's life was shaped differently at 15 after his father became disabled in an accident, leaving him to handle farm work while supervising the older workers. The process made Tony develop a hard work approach and an unwavering drive that would govern his future undertakings. In the year 1980, seeking better prospects, Tony and his spouse Minnie emigrated to Canada. Initially, Tony worked on a dairy farm and then moved on to construction, which he took to very quickly and became a foreman. Minnie also used to do odd jobs to support the family during this period. Tony became interested in gold mining after he came to know of the gold rush in Yukon in which people were said to be earning huge amounts of money. He took a risk and in 1984 bought a ticket to Whitehorse in Yukon in order to make a career in gold mining. Although the mining season had not set in yet, Tony carried on with his work at the oil company in anticipation of the season. In the end, he sold all his devices and used the money to invest in his new mining activity. In the year 1994, Tony started his own gold mining company called Tamarack Incorporated, which has since become one of the most famous names in the industry. Through time, Tony kept on enlarging his company by taking over Tamarack Mines and Paradise Hills, thus increasing his share in the mining sector. Tony's path to success, though, was not a smooth one. Gold mining is an activity that is conducted directly by the people involved and that needs long hours, very harsh weather conditions, and very careful financial management. Amidst these difficulties, Tony's persistence and leadership qualities enabled him to overcome the barriers and achieve his success. Tony Beats joined the cast of Gold Rush in its second season and has since been a prominent figure on the show ever since. His expertise, work ethic, and leadership skills have made him a fan favorite and a key part of the show's success. After joining Gold Rush, Tony has become one of the most known and successful mining men on the show. His wealth is valued to be around $15 million, mostly from his mining company and the show where he features. Tony Beans had many great moments in the last couple of years, especially in 2018. For that year, his miners' endeavor managed to achieve success in the amount of over 3,600 ounces of gold extracted from Eureka Creek by the end of Season 8. The estimated value of this massive collection is roughly $4,390,000. This demonstrates Tony's proficiency and efficiency in the gold mining sector, where he's able to provide important successes time after time. The success of 2018 threw his status as a top player in the mining community to the fore, his performance showcasing his ability to survive in a difficult and competitive space. Tony's success has elevated him to the status of a prestigious person in the mining domain and a darling of spectators. He has only one thing, and that is work that he does to be determined, risky, but calculated, in pursuit of his dreams. I will mine in hell if the ground's good. The second richest person on Gold Rush is Parker Schnabel, a young gold miner in the rugged wilderness of the Yukon who made a name for himself as one of the most successful and respected entrepreneurs in the industry. Marked by unwavering determination, strategic brilliance, and a deep connection to the land, his journey has brought him remarkable success and fabulous wealth. Parker was born on July 22, 1994 in Haines, Alaska, to Roger and Nancy Schnabel. He grew up working in his grandfather's gold mines in Porcupine Creek, Alaska, where he learned about gold mining from a young age. His grandfather, John Schnabel, known as Big John, was a legendary gold miner who inspired Parker to follow in his footsteps. In 2010, Parker was just 16 and he started his own gold mining business. He hired a client at Porcupine Creek and with a few crew members began digging. 
Even at a young age, Parker soon proved himself to be an accomplished and capable miner, finding gold in otherwise neglected fields and extracting it successfully and profitably. His success has not gone unnoticed. In 2012, he was approached by producers of the Discovery Channel reality series Gold Rush and agreed to be a part of the show. Parker quickly became one of its most popular stars and helped to make it a household name. In addition to his Gold Rush career, Parker is also a successful entrepreneur. He founded several companies, including a mining company, a jewelry company, and a textile company. His family has always supported his gold mining, and his parents encouraged him to pursue his dreams. In 2016, Parker's grandfather, John Schnabel, passed away at the age of 92. Parker was saddened by the loss, but determined to continue his grandfather's legacy. He continued mining on Porcupine Creek and opened another mine in Yukon Territory. His success in Gold Rush and his business ventures earned him a fortune of $10 million. His main source of income was for his role in Gold Rush, for which he was reportedly paid $100,000 per episode, thus earning cash at about $2 million at any one time, and he also makes a lot of money from the gold mines and has a lot of money to make in the Yukon. Besides working in the gold mines, Parker is also a strong advocate for environmental protection. He believes in responsible gold mining and is committed to protecting the environment. He also actively supports the community in the Yukon, donating his time and money to many local charities and organizations. When it comes to real estate, Parker owns several properties, including a home in Haines, Alaska, and a residence in the Yukon Territory. His Haines home is a 2,000-square-foot, three-bedroom, two-bath home on a large lot with breathtaking views. His residence in the Yukon Territory is more modest but picturesque, close to his favorite gold mine. In addition to his homes, Parker owns several other properties, including a commercial property in Haines, Alaska, and vacation rental properties in the Yukon Territory, and used his real estate holdings to supply his wealth again by showing his financial skills. Parker Schnabel's passion for adventure and appreciation for quality automobiles are evident in his impressive car collection. His favorite vehicle is the Ford Raptor, a high-performance off-road truck perfect for exploring the rugged terrain of the Yukon. Parker is seen driving a red Raptor with red lettering, showcasing his own style. He also owns the Mercedes-Benz G-Wagon, a luxury SUV known for its ruggedness and roadworthiness. The car fits his outdoor lifestyle and is a testament to his appreciation for quality cars. Parker also owns a Jeep Wrangler, an off-road vehicle popular among gold diggers for its ruggedness and versatility. The car allows Parker to traverse the rugged terrain of the Yukon with ease. In addition, he also owns a Chevrolet Silverado with custom lift kits and off-road tires, adding to his collection of competent vehicles. The vehicles are essential to Parker's gold mining, allowing him to move equipment and traverse the rugged terrain of the Yukon. In addition to his personal vehicles, Parker also owns a fleet of trucks and heavy equipment, which he uses for his gold mining operations. These vehicles are critical to Parker's success in the business, allowing him to extract gold efficiently and profitably. Despite his success as a gold miner, Parker is also an accomplished writer. He's written two insightful books on his journey to success. His first book, Golden Dreams, Chasing Gold, Finding My Fortune in the Yukon, is the story of Parker's young journey from a young Alaskan gold miner to a Yukon millionaire, and the book tells of his experience in the face of gold challenges. His second book, Audacious Gold, How I Turn Passion into Profit, offers a behind-the-scenes look at the gold mining industry. Parker shares his insights on how to succeed in the business, including finding the right bets, managing a team, and overcoming obstacles. Both books have been praised for their authenticity and insight into the world of gold mining, making them an invaluable resource for anyone interested in the industry or wanting to learn more about Parker Schnabel's journey to success. Parker is also an avid traveler who enjoys exploring new cultures and discovering the beauty of the world. He's traveled to many countries, including Australia, New Zealand, and Guyana, and often shares his travel experiences on social media. His fans love the amazing photos and videos captured during his travels. Parker is also an avid hiker who enjoys spending time outdoors and exploring the mountains near his home in Haines, Alaska. He traveled in some of the most beautiful and remote places in the world and shared his travel adventures on social media. His followers are fascinated by the sights he finds on his journey. In addition to his gold mining, real estate business, and personal investments, Parker owns several other assets that contribute to his wealth with an impressive collection of snake gold and valuable jewelry, which he often wears in public and in person. He also collects a variety of items related to gold mining and the Yukon Territory, such as unique mining equipment, vintage photographs, and historical documents.
For eight pulse racing seasons, Todd Hoffman kept viewers hooked on the Discovery Channel's highly successful reality show Gold Rush as the driving force behind a resolute group of miners in their risky missions to find gold in some of the most unconventional and dangerous places. Hoffman's father's involvement in the gold business in part inspired him. He embarked on a quest that resulted in him striking gold several times. Finally unearthing millions of dollars in gold, he left the show with all his family members. Hoffman's path to the stardom of a miner was by no means a walk in the park. His first business was an aviation company in Oregon, where he lived. But unfortunately, it became inactive. Unshakable, he found a new way that would land him among other things in the mining business. And in the Gold Rush series, where his adventures took him to the far-flung places like Alaska and Kiwana, looking for fortune and fame. The Gold Rush job of his was not without its problems. Hoffman experienced all the way from mechanical failures to crew problems. Nevertheless, his undaunted tenacity and leadership skills enabled him to proceed, and it finally paid off with the discovery of substantial gold deposits that would be the financial foundation of his future. Following Gold Rush, Hoffman has remained active in several activities, ranging from music to his own podcast. In spite of his success outside the mining industry, Hoffman still feels the attraction to excitement of the quest for gold, as witnessed by his recent tweet which discloses that he was involved in a new mining reality show, Redemption Gold, but not with Discovery. With respect to net worth, Hoffman has definitely come out on top. The star is valued at an impressive $7 million. The huge wealth is proof of his success not only on the screen, but the tons of gold his miners dug throughout the years. After the share of the dividend to his teammates, the proceeds from the gold discovery are still undoubtedly enough to give Hoffman a good income. Parker Schnabel glued himself to Hoffman's heels with $10 million in his pocket, and therefore he is third at the competition. In the last few years, Hoffman has been on the sidelines of fame, but he's as busy as ever. Meanwhile, Redemption Gold production and his flourishing music career keep him on the go. His iron work ethic and unbending willpower are still the defining qualities of him that keep his legacy in the mining and entertainment industries as steadfast as solid gold. You just never know when you're going to find gold. You just never know. And you never know when you're not going to find gold. Fred Hurt, born on July 10, 1943 in Minot, North Dakota, is a well-known mining industry player. He embarked on his journey in the 1960s as a commercial diver, and that was where he started doing underwater salvage, demolition, and various types of mining. This early experience was a good foundation on which he could build an invaluable amount of knowledge. Following his diving career, Hurt switched into a prosperous construction business, which he ran for 25 years. Nevertheless, mining eventually became his passion, and he proceeded to pursue a new endeavor in the gold mining business. Hurt was successful at the end of the day, even though he had faced many challenges in Alaska, where he became a well-known figure in the mining industry. Hurt's wide experience in diving, construction, and mining has the source of his in-depth understanding of the industry. The experiences he's had has enabled him to successfully overcome challenges and apply innovative ideas to his mining operations. Hurt has gained wide recognition for his roles in the Discovery Channel's reality series Gold Rush. The series had him as a member of the cast since its first season, through which he has become a central figure in the show, winning hearts and minds of audiences with his passion and mining expertise. The series moved forward as Hurt started to take big steps by buying the Porcupine Creek lease transforming him into a major cast member. The move revealed his commitment to the mining industry and made him a more known figure in the world of gold mining. Besides his involvement in Gold Rush, Hurt has been seen in different spin-off series as well, revealing his mining projects along with his son Dustin Hurt. These spin-offs, such as Gold Rush, the series White Water, and Gold Rush All the Glitters, gave the viewers the chance to see the father and son team confront even more demanding mining operations and grab success in new ways and overcoming new difficulties. Hurt's appearances on Gold Rush and its offshoots entranced viewers with his undeterred effort, unyielding zeal, and passionate love for mining. The show followed his journey on these shows, thus providing the audiences with an insightful and entertaining look at the challenging and thrilling world of gold mining. The earnings of Hurt were approximately $22,000 per episode of Gold Rush, according to reports. Not only did he lead a successful mining team, but also earned through his construction business, which added to his total net worth. At present, his estimated net worth is $6 million, just same as the outcome of his dedication and perseverance. 
Gold mining, however, brought with it the associated dangers and difficulties. But Hurt's commitment and skills were rewarded in a spectacular way. The gains he made from Gold Rush in its mining venture made him a wealthy man for sure. In his private life, Hurt was married three times and he had four children from previous relationships. He cherished his family and found happiness and fulfillment in their love and support. The death of Hurt on July 11, 2023 at the age of 80 continues to be honored. The Discovery Channel and his fellow cast members paid a tearful tribute to his memory, acknowledging his contributions to the mining sector and the effects he left on the entertainment industry. Fred Hurt, well known as Dakota Fred, has played a major role in the mining industry by his experiences and knowledge presented on the reality series Gold Rush and its spin-off shows. Hurt's expedition that centered on gold mining activities in Alaska and other difficult areas highlighted the risks and gains associated with mineral exploration. Hurt's mining activities offered a model to budding miners and enthusiasts of the difficult conditions required for gold extraction from hard-to-reach terrains. The main idea here was to show practical application of theoretical knowledge and hands-on approach through which one can focus on technical and physical aspects of the mining process. In the entertainment industry, Hertz's impact has been just as significant. His gold rush and the spin-off's appearances have been really exciting for the viewers because they get a chance to see the reality of gold digging. The journey of Hurt, the trials, and the triumphs has been the reason behind his popularity and the love among the viewers. The legacy of Fred Hurt is kept alive by the footprint he left in the mining industry and the entertainment world. His devotion, knowledge, and zealousness for mining keep on motivating a new group of miners and enthusiasts. Therefore, his contributions are recognized and appreciated for many years from now. I've had worse problems. I mean, I am holding a pan of gold, but uh, at the same time, you know, this ground's good, but I know what we're going for at the bottom is better. Another rich member of the cast is Rick Ness, who is widely recognized for his appearances on the show. He has emerged as a prominent figure in the gold mining industry, with an estimated net worth of $3 million as of 2023. His journey to success is marked by perseverance, hard work, and a passion for gold mining. Born on March 5, 1981 in Michigan, Rick Ness developed a strong work ethic from a young age while working for his father's construction company. His skills with machinery, honed during this time, would prove invaluable in his later career. After completing high school, Rick harbored dreams of playing professional football but was forced to abandon this path due to a head injury. Following his football setback, Rick moved to Milwaukee, where he immersed himself in the local music scene. He joined the .357 string band as a bassist and toured the world, showcasing his musical talents. It was during this period that Rick's path crossed with Parker Schnabel, a pivotal moment that would change the course of his life. Rick's entry into the world of gold mining came when he joined the cast of Gold Rush in Season 3. Starting as an operator on the rock truck and excavator, Rick's hard work and dedication quickly caught the attention of Parker Schnabel, leading to a promotion to foreman. As foreman, Rick managed the Indian River operation, showcasing his leadership skills and expertise in the gold mining industry. However, Rick's journey on Gold Rush took a turn when he made a costly mistake that resulted in a loss of $50,000 in wages for Parker. Determined to make amends, Rick took a bold step in Season 9 by starting his own mining crew. The decision proved to be a game-changer, as Rick broke the show's record for the most gold mined by a mine boss in his first year. Starting his own mining crew was a risk, but it was a risk worth taking. He wanted to prove himself and show that he could be successful in this industry. With his own crew, Rick went on to achieve great success, surpassing expectations and leaving a lasting impact on Gold Rush. His rise to prominence serves as a testament to his perseverance, determination, and ability to adapt to new challenges. Together, they faced numerous obstacles and setbacks, but remained steadfast in their pursuit of success. Rick's leadership skills and expertise guided his crew through challenging mining operations, resulting in significant gold yields and establishing their reputation as a formidable mining team. This newfound success brought Rick and his crew recognition with the mining community and among Gold Rush fans. Their achievements not only secured Rick's place in the gold mining industry, but also paved the way for future opportunities and collaborations. In terms of earnings breakdown, Rick's salary from Gold Rush accounts for approximately 60% of his net worth, while his gold mining operations contribute to around 40%. By diversifying his income streams, Rick has established a solid financial foundation that continues to grow over time. I hope that uh, I can convince him that we're good neighbors, good stewards of the land, 
and we're good miners and we're going to do everything the right way. The next guy on our list is Dave Turin, a prominent figure in the mining industry, who was born on April the 29th, 1959, in Oregon, USA, into a family deeply entrenched in the mining business. Raised with a fascination for mining due to his father's ownership of a quarry, Turin's upbringing laid the foundation for his future endeavors in the industry. Despite his early exposure to mining, Turin chose to pursue higher education and enrolled in college to study civil engineering. During his college years, he gained valuable knowledge and skills in engineering principles and practices, setting the stage for his future career. After completing his education, Turin faced a pivotal decision – whether to pursue a traditional engineering career or join his family's mining business. Ultimately, he chose the latter, drawn to the allure of the mining industry. Turin's presence on television, particularly on the hit reality series Gold Rush, has made him a household name among aspiring miners. His expertise in operating heavy machinery and his deep understanding of the industry have earned him respect and admiration, making him a role model for those looking to enter the field. Beyond his television persona, Turin's passion for mining has brought attention to the industry's importance and the crucial role it plays in society. By showcasing the hard work, dedication, and rewards of mining, Turin has sparked greater interest and appreciation for the industry, contributing to its overall growth and popularity. After completing his college education, Dave Turin made a pivotal career choice by joining his family's mining business. This decision proved to be instrumental in shaping his future, as it provided him with invaluable experience and knowledge in the mining industry. However, Turin's career trajectory took a significant turn when he joined the cast of the reality TV show Gold Rush, renowned for its thrilling gold mining adventures. Turin quickly endeared himself to Gold Rush fans, who affectionately nicknamed him Dozer Dave. His expertise in operating heavy machinery and his unwavering dedication to his craft impressed viewers around the world, solidifying his status as a fan favorite. Turin's contribution to Gold Rush extended beyond showcasing his mining skills. They also propelled him to stardom in the reality TV realm. This newfound fame led to the creation of his own spin-off series, Gold Rush – Dave Turin's Lost Mine, where he continued his quest for gold, captivating audiences with his charismatic personality and genuine passion for mining. As a reality TV star, Turin's financial success can be attributed to his earnings from the show, Reports indicate that he earns a substantial salary of $50,000 per episode, a figure that accumulates significantly over the course of multiple seasons. When factoring in his various business ventures, Turin's annual income is estimated to reach nearly $1 million, showcasing the lucrative nature of his endeavors. In terms of net worth, Turin is valued at $2 million, a testament to his success both on and off the screen. While he may not be the wealthiest among his former Gold Rush co-stars, such as Tony Beats and Parker Schnabel, Turin's impact and influence in the industry are undeniable. Turin's social media presence is another facet of his connection with fans. With over 16,000 followers on Instagram, he provides a glimpse into his personal life and mining projects, fostering a sense of community among his audience. Looking ahead, Turin's future projects and endeavors remain undisclosed. However, his passion for mining and reality TV suggest that he will continue to be involved in similar ventures, providing fans with more opportunities to witness his adventures and discoveries. A lot of things happened that weren't supposed to. We're really behind the eight ball at this point. The next Richie on our list is Fred Lewis, known for his role in the reality TV show Gold Rush, and he made a significant impact when he joined Parker Schnabel's mining crew. Born on November the 24th, 1977 in Maine, the United States, Fred grew up with a military background. He served in the United States Army as a Special Forces medic, where he traveled to various countries, including Korea, Iraq, Africa, and Afghanistan, providing medical aid and teaching Korean to fellow soldiers. However, Fred's military career was cut short after 14 years, when he was hit by a sniper round. Following his departure from the Army in 2011, Fred pursued higher education, studying web design and earning a master's degree in education. Before joining Gold Rush, Fred worked briefly in the agriculture industry and later as a high school biology teacher and middle school history teacher also coaching volleyball and wrestling teams. Fred's entry into the world of reality TV began with his participation in the show American Ninja Warrior, where he trained intensely with fellow retired army friends. He later joined Gold Rush, Parker's Trail, before making his debut on the main series in season 11. 
Fred Lewis was initially hired as a medic and security team member for Parker Schnabel's exploration in Papua New Guinea. However, when conflicts arose between Parker and his foreman, Rick Ness, Rick left the crew and Fred stepped in as his replacement. Fred then assembled a team of ex-military personnel who had been wounded on the battlefield, showcasing his leadership skills and reliability within Parker's company. As for his earnings, the average pay for cast members of Gold Rush per episode ranges from $10,000 to $25,000. Being one of the newer faces on the show, Fred's per episode salary may be closer to the starting figure. However, Fred had already amassed a substantial fortune from his military service and various jobs before joining the show. As of 2024, Fred Lewis's net worth is estimated to be $1.6 million making him one of the wealthiest cast members on Gold Rush. Fred Lewis's journey from military service to reality TV star highlights his resilience and adaptability. His role in Gold Rush has not only brought him financial success, but also recognition for his dedication and hard work, further solidifying his place in the gold mining industry. I'd say it's like watching paint dry, but it never gets old watching yellow lines of gold run down a table. You must have known Freddie Dodge from Gold Rush, who's a well-known professional miner, prospector, and reality TV star, as he's made a significant impact in the gold mining industry. With an estimated net worth of $1 million as of 2023, Freddie's successful career and various business ventures have contributed to his financial success. His expertise in gold mining has earned him recognition through his appearances on the popular show Gold Rush, where he showcases his skills and knowledge in mining, establishing himself as a respected figure in the mining community. Born on December 30, 1966 in Colorado, United States, Freddie Eugene Dodge developed his passion for mining at a young age. Growing up near Fairplay Claim, Freddie began his mining adventures at just nine years old. He was influenced by his family, particularly his elder brother Derek, who's also a miner and a reality TV personality. The Dodge brothers have a strong bond and have worked together on several projects, including their appearances on Gold Rush. Freddie Dodge made his mark on Gold Rush during the first and second seasons, but it was in the third season that he solidified his position as a regular cast member. His expertise, experience, and skills in the mining industry earned him the nickname Gold Guru. Freddie's involvement in Gold Rush not only showcased his incredible talent, but also significantly contributed to his net worth. As a prominent figure on the show, he's gained widespread recognition and has become a household name among fans. One of Freddie Dodge's notable contributions to the mining industry is his innovative approach to gold recovery. He's designed and built specialized equipment that sets him apart from other miners. His techniques involve using a combination of gravity and water flow to separate gold particles from surrounding materials, maximizing the efficiency of the separation process. Additionally, he uses fine-tuned vibration systems to further refine the separation of gold from other materials, increasing the purity and value of the final product. Apart from his success on Gold Rush, Freddie Dodge has ventured into various other business opportunities within the mining industry. He owns Dodge Construction, a prominent mining company known for its exceptional results. Through his company, Freddie implements cutting-edge techniques and utilizes state-of-the-art equipment to maximize efficiency and productivity. Freddie's off-screen ventures also include fashion and merchandise, where he's launched a line of clothing and merchandise. Featuring his unique style and branding, fans can now showcase their support for Freddy's and his mining expertise through his merchandise. He's not only passionate about mining, but also about making a positive impact on the world. He actively supports various charities and organizations focused on environmental conservation and the well-being of mining communities. Freddy's commitment to giving back is evident in his efforts to protect the environment and support mining communities. He recognizes the importance of sustainable mining practices and works towards preserving natural resources and habitats. From his early beginnings near the Fair Play claim to his successful career on Gold Rush, Freddie has established himself as a respected figure and an expert in the field of gold mining. His innovative techniques, business ventures, and philanthropic efforts have not only contributed to his financial success, but also to the growth and development of the mining industry as a whole. You got that right. Let's get the heck out of here. Next is Jack Hoffman, the father and longtime business partner of Todd Hoffman, who's played a significant role in the gold mining industry and the world of reality television. Born on July 16, 1947 in Portland, Oregon, Hoffman's journey into gold mining began later in life, after he retired from his construction business. Inspired by the allure of gold mining, Hoffman embarked on a new adventure, relocating to Alaska with his son, Todd Hoffman, 
to pursue their shared dream of striking it rich. This decision marked the beginning of their mining endeavors and laid the foundation for their eventual fame on television. Gold Rush introduced viewers to the Hoffman's mining exploits and quickly became a hit among audiences. Jack's role as the patriarch of the Hoffman family brought a sense of wisdom and experience to the show, earning him respect and admiration from fans. Throughout his time on Gold Rush, Jack faced numerous challenges, from mechanical breakdowns to the harsh Alaskan wilderness. However, his determination and resilience never wavered, serving as an inspiration to his fellow miners and viewers alike. One of the most memorable moments in Jack's mining career occurred when the Hoffman crew discovered a massive amount of gold in Season 2 of Gold Rush. The discovery, known as the Glory Hole, solidified their place in the gold mining industry and became a defining moment in the show's history. Despite the challenges of the mining industry, Hoffman's dedication and perseverance have led him to success. His fortune is estimated to be around $1 million, a testament to his hard work and commitment to his craft. Jack Hoffman's impact on the gold mining industry and the world of reality television is undeniable. His adventurous spirit, coupled with his strong family values, has inspired countless individuals to pursue their dreams and never give up on their goals. It's just not a matter of turning the machine on and turn the water on and start running dirt. You gotta figure it out. Another familiar face to fans of Gold Rush is Chris Domet, who made a name for himself through his hard work, determination, and expertise in the field of gold mining. Born and raised in the Pacific Northwest, Domit developed a passion for mining and heavy machinery at a young age. Growing up in a region known for its rich mining history, he was drawn to the thrill of the hunt for gold and the challenges that came with it. Before joining the cast of Gold Rush, Domit worked as a heavy equipment operator, gaining valuable experience operating and maintaining large machinery. This experience would prove invaluable as he transitioned into the world of gold mining. His big break came when he joined the crew of the reality TV show Gold Rush. Known for his no-nonsense approach and strong work ethic, he quickly became a fan favorite. His expertise in operating heavy machinery, particularly excavators and dozers, made him an invaluable asset to the mining team. One of Domit's most memorable moments on the show came during Season 3, when he was instrumental in helping the crew recover a dozer that had fallen into a freezing pond. His quick thinking and technical skills saved the day and earned him the respect of his fellow miners. In addition to his work on Gold Rush, Domit is also known for his dedication to his family. He's a loving husband and father, and his family plays a central role in his life. Despite the challenges of life in the mining industry, Domit has always made time for his loved ones, showing that family comes first no matter what. As a miner, Domit understands the risks and rewards that come with the profession. He's faced his fair share of challenges, from equipment failures to harsh weather conditions. However, his determination and passion for mining have never wavered, and he continues to pursue his dream of striking it rich in the Alaskan wilderness. After parting ways with the Hoffmans, Chris Domit found a new home working for Parker Schnabel on Gold Rush. His expertise in operating heavy machinery and his strong work ethic quickly made him one of the most reliable workers on Schnabel's team. Domit's time working for Schnabel proved to be fruitful both professionally and financially. His contributions to the team were invaluable, and he played a crucial role in helping Schnabel achieve success in his mining operations. As a result of his hard work and dedication, Domit's net worth grew to an estimate $400,000. This financial success is a testament to his skills and work ethic, as well as his ability to adapt to new challenges and environments in the ever-changing world of gold mining. Despite his success, he remains humble and focused on his work. His passion for mining and his commitment to excellence continue to drive him forward, making him a valuable asset to any mining team.